122 on a Tuesday edition of the Warm Up. Welcome back, everyone. Live inside the all-new Mercedes-Benz of Atlantic City Studios. Rich Canoe and his PG will take you up to 2 o'clock straight up. Throw the reins over to Mike Gill on the Sports Bash. Uh, keep it locked in throughout the afternoon. Mike's going to have a huge announcement on the uh, Bash at 3.05. So keep it locked and loaded. We'll take you through to 6 o'clock, Will Gill. And, of course, uh, we'll take you to 2 o'clock. Keep it locked in, as I alluded to. Mike's going to have a big announcement at 3.05. We'll get to the Harbor Pines text message board momentarily. And, of course, I will open up the phone lines. Uh, we're going to talk a little NFC East, watching Redskins. Some uh, A lot of rumblings going on down there in D.C. And uh, what's interesting is... You talk about one of these polarizing. We talked about some of the running backs. You talk about a polarizing quarterback. Uh, certainly, uh, RG three is a a you know he's a polarizing guy, and I've been critical of RG three uh, with some of his comments here and there. I I also believe that RG three is a is is a good quarterback. I I don't know. I don't know honestly. I, I can I don't even know if he's better than Cousins. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to roll their eyes at that. Maybe it's a situation where. Uh, RG3 might need a scene, uh, change of scenery. And I know there was some talk that the the Jets were definitely interested in maybe making a move for RG3. But uh, we'll talk about RG3, the Skins, and the NFC East. Lake Lewis does a great job. Now the uh, National Redskins expert reporter for About.com, along with his uh, Redskins reporting and analysis through his own uh, outlet, Sports Journey, is kind enough to join us for a couple moments on a uh, Tuesday. And Lake, good to catch up with you, my friend. How are things? I'm good. How about yourself, too? Everything is going well. And, uh, you know, you, you, we, we talked about a couple quarterbacks uh, maybe two weeks ago under the microscope. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned uh, Bradford and Cutler. And then we mentioned RG3. And then a couple days later, RG3 comes out with his statements. Uh, and I know there was opinions back and forth on this where a lot of people were like, look, you just need to be healthy. You have to have a consistent season. And let's not forget, he had a great rookie campaign, but then the injuries happened. Then Shanahan sticks him back out there. And I want to get your thought, because you're around this team on a daily basis. Is the relationship between RG3 and Gruden, is it really strained, or is it overblown by the media? I think it's overblown by the national media. I really do. And, you know, Q being part of the national media for 10 years and, and actually having to do a 360 somewhat over the last, you know, two, three years with myself covering this team and being more of a local guy, you really get a chance to see how things work. And, you know, with, with, with yourself being, you know, a national guy and you're doing a local type show today, you think about how many times the, the national has to do something that was kind of out of character. Right. <laughs> it right. happens quite a bit. Yeah. And with this whole situation, uh, you know, I know personal things about the two of those guys that would refute any, any nonsense about there being a big rift. Is there a personality difference? 110%. Because Jay Gruden is a former, you know, Reno League quarterback who had some success. And he's a pocket guy. He's a gunslinger. He wants to throw the football a lot. That's what his M.O. was when he was in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Um, RG3 is one of these, you know – athletic quarterbacks more so an athlete happened to be playing quarterback but the guy does have some tools he's got a rocket arm he's an intelligent kid but I just think that right now the two of them haven't found the exact equation that will make them a success you you know you go back to Shanahan uh he knew what was going to make it work so they brought a lot of his Baylor offense and Art Browse still runs to this very day at Baylor and it was a success but I remember us having a conversation years back about this, and you were like, as soon as these NFL defenses figure, figure it out, yep. they're going to take away all the quarterbacks that run. We saw Baltimore in the Super Bowl win against San Francisco lay down the blueprint on how you take away running quarterbacks. Yep. You just send the guy at them every time. Yeah. So, not to get long-winded here, but the, but the issue is this. Robert's not a pocket passer first. He is a, he is a, a, a multi Threat. He's a multifaceted type quarterback, and I think Jay is realizing that there are certain things that the kid just not comfortable being able to do. Not saying he can't do it, but to be able to have to do it first and foremost, they're going to have to rethink some things here. And uh, you know, he's a talent, though he really is. 
How, how do they make up now? I mean, every team's getting hit with the rash of injuries. Niles Paul goes down, a uh, young tight end, emerging tight end, poised for a breakout season. You know, they still have uh, 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 Jordan Reed, uh, Deshaun Jackson uh-huh. uh, with that injured right shoulder. I mean, they still certainly have some playmakers, but I'm just wondering – how much of the offense will fall on RG three shoulders? And again, I go back to, and you can speak a little more about this. One of the articles that was written online by Mike Freeman, uh, basically quoting, uh, there's always the unnamed source, the unnamed head coach saying that Gruden's setting up RG three to fail. And I say this with respect. Are they, when I say dumb down the offense, are they going to try to simplify it a little more this year where to roll him away uh, from saying uh, 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 blitzes, uh, to maybe simplify, get the ground game going a little more, open it up, take more pressure off him, or does everything fall on this kid's shoulders? Well, that's the that's the irony of this, and I have a lot of respect for Mike Freeman, but I totally disagreed with that. And you know, if someone did say that, then shame on that person for saying that, because that means that person, that coach, doesn't even know what's going on. The Redskins are going to run the football quite a bit this year. It's similar to what you have in your back door right there in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about this high-flying offense. They brought in two running backs in DeMarco Murray and Ryan Matthews to run the football. That's how you win games. So the Redskins drafted Matt Jones out of Florida, and and, and Q, this kid looks really good. He he looks like an injury waiting to happen, though, because he runs so violently. (laughs) Uh, You know, 6'2", 240-pounder, and he runs hard. That was the, the 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 thing when they brought him in when they when they drafted him. We're talking about a third round draft pick, and you have a perennial Pro Bowler in Alfred Morris. That wasn't uh, any indication of anything against Alfred. It was just that they understand in order to make this offense capable of being really good, they have to run the football, and then you can get back to some of that stuff that worked for Robert his first year, which was the play action. The play action was killing teams his rookie year where you didn't know what he was going to do when he showed you that ball. Right. Well, they're going to get back to that. And another kid that's looking really good in camp is Chris Thompson from Florida State. So now you have three backs who give you three distinct different things, and they give them to you really well. So I think they're going to run the ball and do a lot of play action. You'll see Deshaun down the field as usual, and you'll see Pierre underneath doing some good things. The, the, the big thing for the, this team right now is to not buy into some of the negativity that's being fed out there and pushed out there. And, and I do start to see a little head starting to look around a little bit, you know, where guys are like, listen, is this stuff true? Well, you should know better because you know the guy in the locker room. Well, yeah, and you can you can also – you look, you can make the argument a lot of times with um, – a lot of times with beat reporters and reporters alike, when, when they cover teams on a daily basis, we, we all know. I mean, we, I'm not mm-hmm. saying I've been guilty of it, but you want to find, you want a story. You want to try yeah. to find a story. Um, and you want to be fair and you want to be objective when reporting said story. However, yeah. it's very easy to every day say the same exact thing. It gets boring after a while. And in this case, in your backyard with D.C., probably the talk of RG3 on the hot seat, Gruden on the hot seat, is it going to work? It probably gets old. But the reality is... From a national standpoint, everyone's waiting to see if this team's going to implode. I mean, I, I really oh, believe I, I don't. I, I really believe like if he doesn't, not only does he have to be healthy all season, he's got to be consistent. I'm not even talking about taking the Redskins uh, to the playoffs because I, just, you don't know how good this team or how bad they're going to be. But have a solid season to shut a lot of people up because I believe if he really struggles and he gets hurt again, this is almost like a Sam Bradford situation. If Bradford goes down one more time, that can be it for him. This can be the same thing for RG3. And I think that's why the spotlight is really on this kid. And plus, he rubs people the wrong way by what he says. Now, again, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You're, you're, you're entitled to, to think highly of yourself. Of course you have to have confidence, and I think a lot of it can get misconstrued, and it probably doesn't, it doesn't help his cause. Well, you, you know, it, it's, it's the whole common situation, and then I wrote an article about it saying he didn't have to apologize to anyone. You know, I, it, and he said it, you know, it, it, just to show you how things are working here, we're at practice, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm there pretty much every day, you know. So we, we were at practice last week, and I'm in the bubble. We're, we're literally inside the, you know, the indoor facility watching the practice. And afterwards, Robert walks off with some of the players who weren't getting interviewed. And there was a gentleman from the New York Post who had driven down 
you know, um, to do an, uh, an interview with Robert. That was set up a month ago. Okay. You know, it was, it was set up during during training camp. It was set up. It just so happened to be that this coincided with the the backlash of his comments, and so so he tweets out that the team told him that Robert wasn't talking. So of course he wasn't happy about that, having driven from New York to DC or to, or to Ashburn, Virginia. So he tweets out that the Redskins are banning media from talking to Robert. So when we're there a little bit later on for practice, and the guy was still there too. Um, it, it appeared that, you know, Tony Wiley, the PR guy for the Redskins, and, and you know, some people were not going to let him talk. And Robert, to his credit, stood there for 10, 15 minutes, I'm not exaggerating, pleading his case that he wanted to speak. And he did speak, and unfortunately they did give him, they did have like a statement that, you know, PR did. And, sure. and I think that that's sometimes where the Redskins backfire on themselves where some of this national negative attention is kind of self-inflicted mm-hmm. gun wounds for themselves because they don't handle things the way sometimes you should. I think the, the intent was there, just like the intent in the, in the interview was there for Robert, but things just don't come out that way. But this was my whole argument. If you don't let your local media, which is us, if you don't let us put the stories out that need to come out, the national media is going to have their way, <laughs> and they're going to dictate what is said and what is happening out of Redskins Park. So that's how, how this whole thing is, is, is set up. So, by the way, yeah, we did talk to Robert. <laughs> we did talk to him. And even the next day, I saw national headlines, Redskins would not let, let us talk to Robert. We did talk to Robert. Yeah. We talked to Robert. He spoke for 10 minutes. So that's just, you know, you know how this business goes. Sure. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of the the whole situation I'm hearing. I'm in practice the last two days, and we're on the sidelines talking about Terrell Suggs and, you know, was it a dirty hit on Bradford? And, and listen, that's your market. I'm sure you guys have talked about that. But but one of the things that I had to tell a couple of my colleagues here is, regardless of what you think, you're not a fan, <laughs> and you can't have your fan opinion come out across on air. And I'm sure there are people in Philadelphia and Delaware, up in South Jersey, that felt like that was a dirty hit. If you're a fan, you can think that. But if you're in the media, you can't come out and call a guy out like that. Now, that's it, just, it's, it's to hard. me, that's unacceptable. It's, it's hard. <laughs> well, two things. When you know, when I cover the Eagles, I, I couldn't stand the Monday press uh, the pressers with Andy Reid because you were only really allotted one question. There was you were never allowed to really get two questions in, which sure, made it a lot sure. more difficult. And you're right. I mean, they're still talking. Uh, about the Suggs hit, and well, it's a situation where, at the end of the day, they practice all week. We know Suggs is a is a is a hard nosed player, and there have been times mm-hmm. where, yeah, they have been there have been low blows um, and 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 questionable hits with Suggs. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I look at it like this with Bradford. Every team out there is going to gun for him. You know, as long as it fits within the rules and the confines of the NFL, and they they, they yeah. don't want to take the cheap shot because he's coming off uh, a gimpy knees. I want to. I know. Yeah, only have for a couple more minutes. All right. The NFC East as a whole, uh, we know where the Eagles are going to be with their offense as long as Bradford is healthy. You mentioned Murray, who they believe is going to be a workhorse. Uh, they have a couple other running backs as well with Matthews and Sproles, and the secondary actually uh, through two games in the preseason. They look to be a player going forward, especially in the NFCs. And then you have the Dallas Cowboys, where everyone's waiting to come back down to earth from last year. And then you have the Giants, who, albeit they have been crushed with injuries, a lot of those injuries are not to starters. But still, it makes you wonder what the heck's going on there uh, with the Giants and their strength and conditioning. I mean, if you were to handicap this uh, NFC East right now, on paper, is Dallas the best team or are the Philadelphia Eagles the best team? on paper is clearly the Dallas Cowboys. There's not even a close second in the division as far as on paper. Are they the best team in the division? That's debatable because contrary to what a lot of my colleagues think, and and you may be happy about this, but I truly believe the team to be leery of in that division is the New York Giants. And everyone keeps telling me, we don't know what you've been drinking. I don't drink, I don't smoke, but I can tell you this. The cold reality is every time that football team has had a disastrous year. No, their they backs against the wall. Yep, yep. Yeah, you, you, they follow yep. it up, not just with a playoff appearance, sometimes a Super Bowl. Well, they win. run I'm the not table. Saying, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going that far yeah. to say that, but I say this, a healthy Victor Cruz and Odell, that is 
that's pretty scary to me. Here, here's you know, the, and I, yeah, I, the the problem with the with the Giants is 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 really going to be the offensive line and and their absolutely. secondary. Their secondary is their and their run defense last year. They could not take care of the read option, and I think that's going to hurt them. I, I really yeah. do. I mean, look, you're right, though. I will say this because we got about a minute to go. Every time Coughlin and Eli have been quote on the hot seat, where people questioned uh-huh. uh, uh, the franchise going forward, they certainly have made a, a run, and and they've done it against the AFC. So that's something to hang your hat on because they play the AFC East if you're a Giants fan this year. Exactly, they but play. um. You know, you, you look at Dallas, they're still going to have a, a high-powered offense. That offensive line came together. And the defense, everyone thought was going to be the question mark last year, made some big plays. And then you have Chip Kelly and uh, just stirring that madness. You know, <laughs> there's there's something yeah. Chip Kelly knows that a lot of us don't know. That's why I think the NFC East this year, I don't want to say it's wide open, but I can see an 8-8, eight and 9-17 eight, and 17 winning that division. Oh, I agree. I, I think I think ten and six is a lot to win the division this year, um, as has been pretty much the last few years. Sure. But I, but I think that you could probably get a team at nine and seven. I don't know about eight and eight, but I think nine and seven probably wins the division. Ten and six is a lot to win it, and, and I think that all team each team has a strength that is going to be something that's going to be something to be reckoned with. Yeah. And I will say this about the Redskins team here. I know I, know I have to go here. Go ahead. Look out! Look out for the Redskins' defense this year. I'll, I'll leave that with your with your listeners. I think their defense this year has a chance to be really good, right. and it will help save them a little bit. <laughs> I'll hold you to it, Lake. Always good to catch up with you. Uh, of course, uh, Lake Lewis, National Redskins reporter, about dot com. Check him out online, and of course, Sports Journey, and uh, follow him on Twitter. You know, we'll talk during the season, my friend. Appreciate the time. All right, take care now.